So today we're going to make a nearly natural deodorant. Um, I say nearly natural because natural is a word that's thrown around a bit too freely in cosmetics. Um, we refer to a natural product in terms of our formulas. Um, we refer to the ingredients being majority non-synthetic. Uh, you cannot claim that your end product is natural when marketing, but you can state that the percentage of natural ingredients used is a certain amount. Um, if you want your formula to be more natural, um, then omit the C1215 alkyl benzonate um, from this formula and you can increase the oil and shea butter in its place. Um, you would also use essential oils over synthetic fragrances. Um, remember though, just because something is natural doesn't necessarily mean that it is safer than synthetic. So do your research as there's lots of beneficial and safe synthetic ingredients out there that will really enhance your finished product. Um, this formula will give you the opportunity to get creative with essential oils. Um, just check the recommended usage for each one and don't go above the 1% max for the recipe when combined. If you want to use a fragrance oil instead, uh, just check the IFRA for the allowed usage level uh, for leave-on deodorant. So here's our formula. Uh, we're making a 50 gram batch. First you need 25% coconut oil or 12.4 grams. Uh, a light oil that absorbs easily. It moisturises and it balances the skin and has antimicrobial and antifungal properties. Then we have 20% of shea butter or 10 grams, an emollient and occlusive that helps the skin to retain moisture by forming a barrier. It has an anti-inflammatory property and helps to soothe the skin. Our hardener is Carnuba Wax, 13% or 6.5 grams. It's a hardener that's easily absorbed, keeps the product solid and improves spreadability. Um, we've used Carnuba to keep the product vegan, but you could also use beeswax. Then I've added in a C12 to 15 alkyl benzonate, 10% uh, or 5 grams. Um, the reason I've added this is because it's an emollient that enhances the texture of a final product and it also helps to deliver the scent, which is obviously good in a deodorant. Um, it's also a conditioning agent with antimicrobial properties. And lastly, it creates a moisture barrier so it can help with the antiperspirant quality. First in the cool down phase, we've got 30% or 15 grams of arrowroot powder. Um, this has great absorption, absorption power, um, aiding in being slightly antiperspirant. It's anti-inflammatory and pH balanced, and it also enhances the texture of the final product. Scent is obviously really important for a deodorant, so I've chosen essential oils just generally because they tend to be a bit more powerful than fragrance oils. I've used 1% and uh, 0.5 grams. This is made up of 0.4 grams of sweet orange essential oil and 0.1 grams of black pepper essential oil. Um, this make, makes a sweet but really, really pleasant deodorant smell and it does stay for most of the day. You can choose what essential oils you like. Um, some will be better for deodorants than others. And then you should be familiar with this by now. 1% or 0.5 grams of vitamin E, an antioxidant, and it also helps to prevent cell damage. Um, we normally put this in with all our anhydrous formulas. So this is really simple to make. Just put all of your phase A ingredients into a beaker, give it a little stir, and then you're going to heat it up. So fill a pan with about two inches of water. That's your water bath pop your beaker in and then stir until all the ingredients have melted together. Then take off the heat, remove the beaker from the pan and give it a little stir. This is where I add just a little bit of the arrowroot powder uh, while the formula is still quite hot and just mix that in just to test the consistency to make sure that I'm not putting in too much because I want it to be pourable at the end. Once it's cooled to 40 degrees C, then you can add your essential oil blend and your vitamin E and stir well. Then 
Then I add the rest of my arrowroot powder a little bit at a time, just taking note of the consistency, because again, we want to be able to pour it in, in, into containers, so you need the right consistency for that. I just found these little 15 mil deodorant containers on the internet. Um, you can get them on Amazon or other places are available. Um, and just pour your mixture into the container uh, while it's still liquid. Just fill it right up to the top. And then you can leave it to set. Uh, I like to put it in the fridge for a little while because it just speeds up the process. Once it's set, it's ready to use. You can roll it up and down like a normal deodorant. It goes on lovely and smooth and absorbs into the skin really easily, leaving a really beautiful scent. Please read the blog post link below uh, that goes with this video because we've given some substitutions that you can use and our reasoning behind using the alkyl benzonate and also why we haven't used bicarbonate of soda in, our, in this formula. Like and subscribe for some more recipes or join our Patreon link below for some more exclusive content and business support. Thanks for watching.